Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've finished pretty much our, our study in the Book of Ruth, and I wanted to put out another video here on May 17, because uh, there are still a lot of people that are out there that are interested in uh, this date. Of course, May 17, according to Torah calendar, is the Feast of Pentecost. So we're coming up on spring, uh, here shortly uh, uh, after the new year we're going into winter but it won't be long before spring gets here and and so I've spent two years uh, since I first published uh, this timeline back in uh, the fall of 2018 I've spent a couple of years uh, as we've gone through different studies other verse by verse studies I've I've taken the time to to review this uh, constantly, to go over it and uh, and and see if if just maybe uh, there is there are, are some other uh, timelines in, within the year of 2021 that surpass the uh, uh, timeline of spring May 17, 2021. And I haven't been able to find anything that even comes anywhere near to matching this. And that's what has me so excited. You know, it, it, it's not hard to look around us and see a lot of interesting things taking place uh, prophetically. Uh, when I first uh, published uh, this timeline back in, in uh, 2018, the, uh, we had, had not seen the Abraham Accord. Uh, of course, the virus, the cor coronavirus, hadn't come upon the scene, uh, or, or nearly as, as much. I mean, there hasn't been as much corruption and scandal uh, come to the surface uh, within politics and within uh, all of the unrest, the civil unrest within our, our social uh you know, network of things, uh, culturally, socially. There's been a lot happened since then. And I remember back then people saying, but Steve, you know, 2021, I, I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, it's, I don't see how things can, could go on much longer. And uh, of course, it, they have, and, it, and it, it appears to me that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. I want to begin this by, uh, and I hope that you can kind of hang through this and, and see just how exciting this is uh, as well. I think a, a good place to start would be to remind you of, of how that we need to understand the number of days along any timeline. And for that, we need to go to Daniel. If, if you look at the chart I'm putting on the screen here, uh, we see that there are a precise number of days along a timeline. And these days that are given us in Daniel, uh, particularly verses 11 and 12 of, of, of chapter 11, Daniel 11, 11 and Daniel 11, 12, uh, they help us in understanding this. And I want you to take note of the order in which they're given. It, it should be obvious from the chart that verse 11 is precedes verse 12. And, and so we're going to look at that. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there should be 1,290 days. 1,290 days, Daniel 12:11. I, be, I believe, that, as many others do, that that daily sacrifice is the church. It is taken away. That's the rapture. And the abomination that maketh desolate uh, is the midpoint. From the time that which has continued, the word in the Hebrew is tamid, meaning uh, uh, continual, that which has continued be taken away. And the word... Uh, uh, Sewer there, meaning abolished, cut off, depart in the Hebrew. And so it, it, is, it is my understanding that the church is that living sacrifice that departs and is cut off. 
Now, it's good to have other scripture to come in to help assist us in, 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 in understanding this, and we have that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a singular living sacrifice. That's not a bunch of plural sacrifices, but a singular living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12.1. That's not plural, that's singular. A singular living sacrifice. Whatever is taken away or departs here in Daniel 11.11, 11, it does so at the beginning. You know, if it was something that was cut off at the midpoint, okay, then the verse would make no sense. Since, since it is 1290 days from that which departs to the midpoint, and folks, this forces a 30-day gap between the rapture and the time that the two witnesses begin their 1260-day ministry. We read in Revelation 11.3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Twelve hundred and sixty days. That's Revelation 11.3. When the two witnesses have completed their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will wage war with them, and he'll overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city where their Lord was also crucified, Romans 11, 7, and 8. The midpoint. So we, we've got the rapture, a 30-day gap, the two witnesses, they minister for 1,260 days. They're killed at the midpoint. That, that 1,260 and that 30 is the 1,290 days. That 1,290 days, folks, can go nowhere else along the timeline. We know that from Daniel chapter 11. The 30 days can go, can go nowhere except in between, okay, the rapture of the church and the beginning of, the, of the, the witnesses, the two witnesses' ministry, the 1260 days that they minister. Now there's more that confirms that, but I don't have time to go into that right now. I will say that uh, the two, uh, these two witnesses are said to appear before the great and terrible coming day of the Lord. Well, if you didn't understand the gap, you'd have to, you'd have to, 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 we would have to believe that these two witnesses are going to appear before the rapture takes place. But they don't. They appear within the gap, which is why they, they, it is said they appear before the great and terrible day of the Lord. The, the Daniel's 70th week. They, they appear within that gap. They have no reason to appear before the rapture. And, and the, the day of the Lord is a, is a phrase that's used in, in Scripture to describe uh, a period that begins with the tribulation and it ends at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ. And so there's where the 1290 goes. And that goes to the midpoint. And then we have the, the abomination of desolation occur. And so it's from it's it's 2550 days because the Antichrist reigns for 1260 days, 2550 from rapture to the return of Christ at, at the end of the Antichrist's reign. Now uh, Blessed is he who waits and reaches the end of the 1335 days. That's midpoint to the kingdom, 1335 days. It follows the, the verse that just preceded it. That is the blessed day, the kingdom. If this 1335 days began at the rapture, well, then, well, the 1335 days would end on the 45th day of the great tribulation period inside the 1260 day reign of the Antichrist and that makes no sense. So it's 1335 days midpoint to kingdom. So we are given the total number of days. This is what people, many people fail to understand. We are given the total number of days, rapture, a 30 day gap, the two witnesses minister 1260 days, the midpoint, the Antichrist, he rules for 1260 days. And then 
that 1335 from the midpoint to the kingdom indicates that there are 75 days before the kingdom begins after Christ returns. Christ returns at 2550 days, but there's, there's something there that takes place within a 75 day period before the kingdom begins. So we know there's a total of 26, 25 days along any timeline. Any timeline must have 26, 25 days. Now I've been I've been asked, well, Steve, well, what about the 360 day year versus the 365 day year? It, it doesn't matter. Days are days, no matter what standard of measurement that we use. The only factor that is relevant are the dates upon which these markers along the timeline rest. Therefore, it's to our advantage that we look and see where these dates land or 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 hit on the Hebrew calendar. This 30-day gap is mandatory. It can't be placed anywhere else along a complete timeline. So we can be assured that there are exactly 2550 days from rapture to the second coming of Christ. 2550 days. Now, the following dates that I'm, I'm about to review with you again, and this has probably been the third or fourth time I've done this since 2018, are confirmed by Torah calendar. You'll find these dates intriguing. All these dates and dates, days and dates, and, and uh, markers on, along the, the, the Hebrew calendar, you should find them very intriguing. So going back uh, to uh, many of the facts that I, I covered in, in past videos, uh, we've I talked a lot about spring and how the spring seems to be, uh, the, the preponderance of evidence seems to point to spring rather than fall, much of that having to do with us being the church, not Israel. Spring means new beginning. The evidence for a rapture strongly favors spring as opposed to fall. And when I even just hear the word fall, I think of the uh, man's uh, fall into sin, the uh, Adam and Eve sinning in the garden, the fall. Uh, fall really to me equals the opposite of what spring does. Spring means new beginning, fall means death. And I can't hardly uh, perceive of a rapture occurring in the fall. Now can Christ come at any time? Of course He can. Uh, we, uh, we could go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning in heaven. And you need to understand that I'm not being dogmatic about any of this. All I'm doing and all I've ever done is show you what is the most likely timeline based upon the given, any given evidence at the time. Now, I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, remember the, the eclipse of 2017, August 21st, 2017, and how that it crossed out America. It cut a path across America. And that there's another eclipse that occurs April 8th of 2024, which, which X's out America. And if the church departed this spring, then that Xing out, that crossing out of America, of that total solar eclipse in, on April 8th in 2024, would occur inside the tribulation period. And I find that interesting. What I also find is interesting about spring is that, that, that we have a lot of great deluge, uh, Noah's flood data associated with spring. In fact, spring was the beginning of the, the rains that fell, the, the, uh, the, the springs that were, that were uh, loosed. Uh, that came forth from the ground, the flood began in spring. So that means judgment begins also in spring. Uh, so the beginning of the flood, uh, as close as I could trace it, and, and, that's, and I base that on the month, the Hebrew month and Hebrew day that is actually given us in Genesis chapter 7 and 8, was on a May 12. 
the beginning of the flood was on a May 12, and I find that interesting. Uh, in talking about the, the new Hebrew year, uh, every year there's a, a date that begins the new Hebrew year, transitions from one Hebrew year to another. It was on a new Hebrew year day that the earth became dry after the flood. Now, I've, it, it's been very painstaking. I don't mind telling you so. It's been very painstaking, you know, wrangling through all of this data, doing all this research to, and looking at dates and deriving those dates from both Scripture as well as Torah calendar to be able to, to, to actually look at the Western calendar date as well as the Hebrew calendar date of when these events took place. Uh, I'm not, I have no interest in making anything up or inventing any, any, any type of numbers or data or anything else like that. That's not in my interest to do that at all. And I'm always stunned, always shocked when I come across a date in which I see these, something take place on a particular date. It was on a new year on the Hebrew calendar, that's not our calendar, that's the Hebrew calendar, that the earth became dry after the flood. I find that interesting. If you don't think that, and, and, and I, the reason I bring that up is because I think it's important for you to understand that it is, I, I do not believe it is out of, of God's character to take and do things on specific dates, and I think that speaks volumes to what we're talking about here. Genesis chapter 8, and it came to pass in the 600th and first year. Okay, that's, you have, to, you have to do a little research to find out what year that was. In the first month, the first day of the month, it says, that's, that's a new year. The waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. That's verse 14 of chapter 8. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day, the twenty-seventh day of the second month, was the earth dried. That's completely dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Okay, dry. Dry on a new year, but completely dry. Okay, a few days later, the second month, the, the, the 27th day of the second month. Okay, that's when they left the ark. They left the ark, month two, day 27. Month two, day 27, in the year in which our Lord was crucified, was May 5. Well, if you go back to the beginning of Torah calendar and you look at the first year, the year of creation, May 5 was creation day one okay now that same month two second month 27th day of the second month will actually be may 10 in 2021 it's it's never always the same date may 10 in 2021 i believe that the year of the flood was 2324 bc because it was 1656 uh, years after Adam, or, you know, after creation. The, the date is, is calculated from Torah calendar's creation year to Noah's age when the flood began. The flood began on the 17th day of the second month, according to Genesis 7:11, and that Gregorian date, Western calendar date, was May 12 or 13 just days before Pentecost, May 17, 2021. Now you're going to find many, much of this very interesting. I don't see how you could not. The very first Pentecost, if you go by Torah calendars, 34 AD crucifixion year, date. The, the first Pentecost and Israel's birth are a match. They, they align. They coincide with one another. The first Pentecost in 34 AD was on a May 14, which was Israel's rebirth date in 1948. 
That's inter- I find that interesting because the church was a new beginning as well a- a- as was Israel's rebirth. You can look at it as two uh, new beginnings. Now we know that, that, that the 80 years really must factor into end times prophecy. Back in uh, 2017, I remember when we were all excited about the Revelation 12 sign. Everything seemed to, to point to 70 years, 70, 70, 70. Our emphasis, our focus, our attention was on the number 70. And I think that what we've come to find out here now is that it could very well uh, be 80. 80 may be that magic number. Uh, 1948 to 2028 will mark 80 years. From Israel's rebirth to 2028 is 80. If we back up seven years, take, subtract seven years, that brings us back to 2021. There's something interesting about 2021 as it concerns Enoch and uh, the subject of jubilees. Enoch, in uh, 2021, uh, it, it will have been 100 jubilees from God taking Enoch. Okay, 100 exact. Well, it's, it, there's a few decimal point. Uh, it's, I think it's 100.23 uh, or something like that, but it's, it's been 100 jubilees. Enoch was taken by God year 987. That's after creation. You can just look at that. At the source uh, for that, uh, it, Wikipedia will tell you that. And so 30... 980 B.C., creation year, that's Torah calendar's creation year. If you go forward to year 987 after creation, that was 2993 B.C. Now 2993 plus 2021 is 5,014 years. 5,014 divided by 50, a jubilee, is 100 uh, point, I believe, 28 Okay, 100 jubilees. So 2021 is 100 jubilees since Enoch was taken by God, who was a type of the rapture. There's something interesting about creation day one on on the Hebrew calendar being May 5 and the ascension of Christ. Now, uh, I, as if you follow this channel, you know that there was, I spent some time on the, the interesting fact concerning the, the numerical value of the word birth or conception being 271 and the uh, scientific uh, average for the days of human conception being 271. Uh, that's not some number that I just made up. And that the conception of the Messiah uh, how that I, I said that it had to have been Hanukkah day one in 4 BC. Day one of Hanukkah. Uh, does God, you know, do things on uh, magic days like Hanukkah or magic or, you know, specific interesting dates? Well, I believe he does. 271 days from that first day of Hanukkah in 4 BC, uh, he's late. 271 days later, he's born according to Torah calendar. You see it right there, birth of the Messiah. And it happens to be September 11, 3 B.C. September 11. Well, anybody ought to find that interesting because we were attacked Amer- here in America on a September 11. It, it gives it all right there in, in that spring on that spring calendar. Our Lord's death being March 23, His resurrection on March 26, his ascension, May 5, well, uh, that's creation day one in 3980 B.C. So May 5, 3980 B.C. was the first day of creation when God said, let there be light. And, and May 5, 34 A.D. was the day Jesus, the light, ascended back to the Father. Now, listen, folks. I don't, I don't want, I have no interest in wasting any of my time of the Lord's precious time or your time, the, the precious time that the Lord's given you in making up stuff. 
it just doesn't serve any benefit. And I'm not doing any of this for, I'm certainly not doing any of this for views. I have stood heavily on this timeline for two years. And I've gone on to do verse by verse studies in various uh, uh, books of the New Testament, Paul's epistles uh, in particular. If, if I was interested in views or popularity or any, anything else, then I would have kept on doing what others uh, uh, were doing that I saw them do, which was just keep on sort of grasping at straws, trying to come up with some, uh, you know, new, new date every week or every month, you know, for the Lord to come back. And I didn't do that. I, I have, as I, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've, I've spent two years looking for something uh, not only just looking for something to, to, to give me reason to take and, and, and completely toss all of this out as, as meaningless or worthless, but I was looking for something that trumped it. I was looking for something that far to exceeded it in, in, as far as it being intriguing, interesting, and that sort of thing. And, and I just haven't found it. I just haven't found it. So what if the rapture occurred on Pentecost, May 17, 2021, according to Torah calendar? I don't know what the Western calendar date for Pentecost is, and I could really care less. Pentecost, this upcoming year, 2021, will occur on May 17, 2021, according to Torah calendar. That's the only thing that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in Western calendar dates. So what if it occurred? What if we were, the Lord actually took us out of here, given everything that's, that's occurring, uh, the lawlessness, the, uh, and that's a whole separate video, everything else. What, what if is the question it occurred? Having explained to you the, the number of days along a timeline, well, this is what happens. Uh, let's talk about the rapture, the first date on the timeline. May 17, 2021, Pentecost, the, the church uh, ends on the day that it began. Uh, uh, the, as I said, the first Pentecost in 34 AD, the very, when they were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came, that was not May 17, that was May 14, which is interesting in and, all, in and of itself because that was Israel's rebirth date. But it changes every year. In 2021, it's May 17. If you go back to the creation year, the first you know year on the on Torah calendar, Adam's first total lunar eclipse. Okay, the first total lunar eclipse. I believe he was eight years, eight eight days old, eight days old. Imagine Adam, full full grown man, eight days old. The, uh, the first total lunar eclipse was May 17. May 17. And Pentecost in 2021 is on May 17. Now, what would Adam have thought of such an occurrence? Well, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. But the church would end on a Pentecost on which it began and it could be that God gave Adam dominion on May 17, even though he was created on a May 10, which is another interesting date on our timeline here. And if so, May 17, 3980 B.C. to May 17, 2021 A.D. is 6,000 years. And that's also interesting. And, and that... Uh, uh, if you didn't look at anything else, you've got 6,000 years ending, okay, in May of 2021, according to Torah calendar. So now let's talk a little more about that 30-day gap. What's interesting about the 30-day gap is that if you look at Ezekiel's vision of judgment in Ezekiel chapter 1, it was month 4, day 5 on the Hebrew calendar. Month 4, day 5, Okay the beginning of the first 1260 days on our timeline is month four day five june 16 if you go from 
from May, 4, May 17, Pentecost, 30 days, it takes you to June 16, 2021. And it's month four, day five. It is, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that according to this timeline, if the rapture occurs on Pentecost, May 17, 2021, that 30 day gap between the rapture and the beginning of the, of the tribulation period, it, it shows that the tribulation period would begin on June 16, it, which was month four, day five. That was the day, according to Ezekiel chapter one, just look it up, that Ezekiel's vision occurred. And what was that vision about? About judgment. And so I find that interesting. Let's look at the midpoint again. The midpoint abomination of desolation on our timeline. That would take us to November 27 of 2024. And it's interesting because that date, as I pointed out in the past, it, it co coincides with numerous historical events. Okay, on November 27, that would be close to Christmas. They're sending gifts to one another when the two witnesses are killed because November 27 is within the time frame of Christmas and Hanukkah. They're raised three and a half days later and they would depart on a Sabbath. It happens to fall on a Sabbath, the day in which they would depart, November 30. And that total solar eclipse, August 8, 2024, which X's out America to the, to the midpoint, November 27, is 111 days, and I found that interesting. And each time you see a succession of numbers, 111 days. Uh, some things that happened on November 27 was in Jewish history was the foundation of the Second Temple was complete. Uh, the portable sanctu sanctuary in the wilderness was completed. Uh, Hanukkah itself, Hanukkah was established on that date. Uh, and so now let's look at the return date. The return date. Well, as I, as I said, no one his family left the ark June 10, 23, 23 B.C. Month 2, day 27 on the Hebrew calendar, which is May 10 in 2021. The second coming of Christ on our timeline is May 10. May 10, that's the day that Adam was created. So Christ would return, I'm talking about the second coming, on the day in which Adam was created. Now you've got to find that interesting. So the church would be raptured on a Pentecost when it began, and Christ, the second Adam, would return 25, 50 days later on the date Adam was created. There's something else about May 10, May 9 and 10. The Aliyah of Messiah on the Hebrew calendar, it celebrates the coming of, of the Messiah. Now, this month two, day 27, was the day that Noah left the ark. The Hebrew calendar day, Genesis says, Noah exited the ark on dry land was month two, day 27. Now let's look at the kingdom. The beginning of the kingdom age would fall on July 23. That puts in, oh, Steve, I don't like that. It's got to come, it's got to happen on in September, right? No, it doesn't. July 23, 2028. 20, 20, it's on a new moon, month five, day one. This would be before the fall feast cycle, which makes sense given that he has to defeat his enemies and judge the nations before the kingdom age begins, folks. The sheep are separated from the goats, okay? The nations are judged. The Antichrist is, is defeated. Uh, forward 70 days to October 2 and 3 of 2028, 
70 days, and you're at the Feast of Tabernacles. So the 6,000 year ending of man's rule from the creation year 3980 BC would be May of 2021. More specifically, it would be May 5 if you went by the first day of creation, May 10 if you went by Adam's being, Adam being created, and May 17 if you went by that uh, uh, first lunar eclipse that he saw. That's 120 jubilees. The Hebrew phrase, I am, uh, in Exodus uh, chapter 3, I believe, has a numerical value of 21. And all of these uh, numbers associated with Trump, these sevens, Trumps, and we've seen this repeatedly. Uh, uh, sevens seem to just dog this man's heels. Trump's association with the sevens appear to be a sign of coming tribulation and judgment upon the world, in my opinion. That's my take. I don't ask anybody to agree with me on that or any, anything else that I've said here. But that's it. I wanted to put this out here again because we are coming up on spring really soon. Uh, I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, thanks for watching.